praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing it is to know that we can hold on to the man Christ Jesus. Listen, we can hold on to him when we're going uphill. We can hold on to him when we're going downhill. We can hold on to him when we're going through. We can hold on to him when we're getting attacked. We can hold on to him when the fiery darts is thrown at us. We can hold on to him when there's backbiting, backstabbing, and lying. We can hold on to him as there's pitfalls set in our way. We can hold on to him as there's trouble on the horizon. We can hold on to him when we confuse. We can hold on to him when we can't see. We can hold on to him when we can't even feel it. But we can hold on to the man Christ Jesus. What a powerful, powerful, powerful revelation. And we are so grateful and thankful that we are here today and you are here with us as we are here at the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two, going through the Bible in 10. A simple 10 minute devotion that goes line by line, verse by verse, word by word through the word of God. And we do this for having substance of the word of God. We do this to edify, to encourage and inspire covenant keepers, covenant seekers, those that seeking the man Christ Jesus through trials, through tribulations, through troubles, through misunderstandings, through loss, through tears falling, through joy happening, through downhill spirals, through understanding, we are here for this particular cause as we go through the word of God. We are now on Genesis chapter 6, verse number 9, but we started from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Now, if you want to do what they call binge watching, if you want to do and, and go back from the beginning and come through and catch up with us, you can find them all at the Ark. A R K of O F the T H E Covenant C O V E N A N T Ministry M I N I S T R Y the number two on our YouTube page channel and you'll see our symbol right here that says being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up and you can click there which not only is going through the Bible in 10 there we got all types of videos there we got all types and we got Bible studies we got our Sunday morning worship we got our detective game there we even have our Christmas songs are there. We know they're a little wild, but we love doing them. And if y'all encourage us enough, we'll do some this year. But we also got different series that we have been teaching. We closing out on the series nine entitled You Help Me. You Help Me Part 2 is there. You Help Me Part 3 is there. You Help Me Part 4 is there. You Help Me Part 5 is there. Part 6 is there. Part 7 is there. And Part 8 is this Sunday at 11 o'clock at 12.30 on YouTube as we go through the life of Joseph and as we receive precious nuggets and see godly principles lived out in one's life. So come on and worship with us and enjoy it together with us. All right, now sit back and let's get ready as we continue to set ourselves up and get ready for the word of God. And remember, we want you all to know that those that like that podcast, we are on Spotify, Ark of the Covenant Ministry, and you'll see our symbol right here. You'll see that there. And all you got to do is click there, and it's, we got a, a whole lot of stuff on our podcast. Now, some of the new stuff ain't there. We ain't learned. I, I can't get it on there. I don't know what's happening, and I just can't upload it. Maybe y'all can leave me a comment down there and let me know how, 
how to do what I'm trying to do because I don't I don't know what to do. So maybe you all can help me. Leave me a comment and let me know. So let's get ready as we go through the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two, going through the Bible in ten. Genesis chapter six, verse number nine. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Amen. This is the genealogy of Noah. And he was perfect in his ways. And he walked with God. Hallelujah. Now we're going to spend three minutes on interpretation, three minutes on revelation, and three minutes on application, and one minute to wrap it all up. Now this is a very powerful, powerful thing. Because we done heard these words in a couple of places. And this is sometimes a confusion for some. Because this is sometimes that people take this sometimes all out of context and all out of this. Because, see, we know that the Bible says that this is the genealogy of Noah. In other words, this is the production from which Noah has walked. This is the gift that God has presented unto Noah. This is... The the expression, the generation of Noah, as Noah has been through the process. In other words, Noah has found God and Noah has held on to the God of his understanding that Noah had held on to what he had learned about God, that Noah had held on to what God had told him what to do. Noah has been through the process, and through that process, Noah was blessed as he continued to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, as he continued to walk with the Lord. Noah has a genealogy. Listen, Noah not only has a genealogy, physically, he has one mentally, he has one spiritually, and he has one emotionally. You see, Noah is walking with God. Noah, in other words, he's taking God with him through the uphills. He's taking God with him through in the downhills. He's taking God through with him through the tough times. He's taking God with him through in the rough times. He's taking God through with him through the hard times. He's leaning on God when he's confused. He's leaning on God when he don't understand. He's leaning on God even when he don't feel God. He's leaning on God even when he didn't see God. He's leaning on God when, when didn't nobody else talk about God. He's leaning on God when he's all alone. He was leaning on God when he was sick in his body. He was leaning on God when his family was sick. He was leaning on God when there was lack in his family. He was leaning on God when there was backbiting, backstabbing, and lying upon him. He was leaning on God when there was pitfalls. He was leaning on God when there was attack. You see, Noah walked with God. You see, when you walk in with God, you don't let him go when in times of trouble. You don't let him go in times of confusion. You don't let him go when you're being attacked. You won't tell that old fable that they're going to put the Bible down and they're going to deal with it. No, you lean on God in all situations. You don't put him down. You pick him up and draw near in times of trouble. You pick him up and draw near in times of suffering. You draw near in times of backbiting and backstabbing. You draw near when times of pitfall and struggles and fighting. You draw near in times of attack. Listen, Noah walked with God. And the Bible says that he was perfect in his times. In other words, the Bible is not telling you that Noah didn't sin. Because the Bible says all come short to the glory of God. All of us been like sheep that went astray. All of us has sinned against God. And that sin had a punishment to it. But the Bible says that Noah was perfect with it. If you want to, to talk about it again, he says that Job was perfect perfect as well in his time. But listen, I want you to understand that when it says about perfect, they're talking about Noah's faith. See, Noah was faith. 
His faith was perfect in the man Christ Jesus. As Job's faith was perfect in the man Christ Jesus. As they held on to God regardless of the situation or circumstance. They held on to God regardless of the attack. Regardless of the loss. They held on to God regardless of those that was backbiting and backstabbing and lying upon them. They held on to God for those that was trying to set pitfalls against them. They held on to God for through the attacks of the adversary. They held on to God through and being alone as their friends talked about them. They held on to God when they didn't see God. They held on to God when they didn't feel God. They held on to God when they didn't feel good. They held on to God when there was no one else there with them. They held on to God. So God is trying to tell us that we have a perfect form that we can do in every situation and circumstances. And in that perfection, it just simply says, just hold on to God. Now, as we pull back the spiritual layer to this, as we look at it from a spiritual point of view, we trying to understand the process of Noah. We trying to understand the process of God as he releases, as we try to understand for us to be a usage unto God, as we see being a witness unto God. You see, there was a genealogy that was left behind Noah because of his walking with God and being perfect in God. In other words, Noah left some stuff behind him. Noah produced some stuff for others. Noah was that usage of God. Noah was that witness for God. Why? Because he held on to God. And in his holding on to God, God produced some stuff through Noah. God produced uh, growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. God produced in his emotions. God produced in his physical life. God produced where others would see and where others could hear, where others <coughs> excuse me, might not understand, but it was a witness against them where Noah could kick the dust off his feet if they didn't receive him. When Noah would tell him about the man, Christ Jesus, about God Almighty himself. You see, Noah had a reproduction. And that reproduction that Noah had was to reproduce Christ Jesus in every situation, in every circumstance. Produce him in every battle. Produce him in loneliness. Produce him in moments of tears. Produce him in moments of pain. Reduce, re, reproduce him in the moment of strife. Reproduce him in the moment of attack. You see, Noah was one that walked with God that was trying to reproduce God in every situation and circumstance. You see, God want us to reproduce him. The Bible says that we've been transformed from glory to glory to glory. That God wants us to be Christ-like. God wants us to look like him. God wants us to talk like him. God wants us to walk like him. God wants us to think like him. God wants us to work like him. God God want us to stand up like him. God want us to fight like him. Listen, God wants him to be reproduced in every area and in everywhere of the world. And Noah was that one. This is Noah's genealogy. This is what Noah had produced in all areas of his life because he walked in perfection of his faith in Christ Jesus. No one could took that away from him. Now, how do we apply such a thing? How do we put this into motion in our day-to-day -day life? How do we able to do this? Because there's going to be some tough times. There's going to be some hard times. There's going to be some 
some rough times. There are going to be some good times, but there are going to be some low times. There are going to be times of attack. There's going to be times of lack. There's going to be times of hurting. There's going to be times of unsurety. There's going to be times that we feel alone. There's going to be times where we feel that we can't hear from God. Listen, the Bible lets us know that when we are on our journey with Christ Jesus, Paul said his best, I kept the faith. I kept the faith. Listen, you have to keep the faith. You have to hold on to the faith as you travel your journey, as you continue to go through, as you continue to go day by day. Listen, hold on to the faith. I know you're hearing some terrible stuff on the news. I know you're seeing some terrible stuff in the neighborhood. I know you're feeling a kind of way in your body. I know that there's all type of attacks coming up against you. I know that there's sometimes you feel lost. I know that sometimes you feel lonely, but if we just hold on to the faith, hold on to the faith, hold on to the faith, don't lose faith in Christ Jesus, don't lose faith in, in, or in the situation of circumstances, don't let the enemy try to mold your thinking, listen, keep your mind on Christ Jesus, keep your mind on the word of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the faith, not in the way of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, for which he meditates on day and night. Listen, keep your mind on the word of God, even when you don't want to, even when it don't feel right, even when you can't hear from God, even when you can't feel God, even when your body is going through, even when you being a even when you in confusion, listen, grab hold to the word of God and hold on to the faith. Hold on to it. As Paul said that he ran his course. He held on to the faith and ran his course. Run your course and holding on to the faith of Jesus Christ. And listen, remember, you're going to reproduce. You're going to reproduce. You're going to affect your area. You're going to affect those that's around you. Don't let your area affect you. You affect the area with Christ Jesus. Listen, you're going to reproduce physically because somebody is going to be changed by your presence. You're going to produce mentally because you're going to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. You're going to produce emotionally because you're not going to let your emotions drive you. You're going to let Christ Jesus lead and direct you. Listen, you're going to produce spiritually because you're going to change from one spirit to the next. You're going to become a member of the body of Christ. You're going to put on Christ and put off darkness. Listen, you're going to be reproduce in every area of your life when you hold on to the man Christ Jesus. Hold on to your faith. That's a powerful, powerful revelation. Now, it might be some under the sound of my voice that has never turned toward Christ, that's going through all kind of chaos, that's going through all kind of trials and tribulations, that's got that emptiness on the inside of you. Listen, Christ Jesus is here for you. The Bible tells us if we can take it by faith, if we believe in our heart on the Lord Jesus, believe in the virgin birth, that he lived on this earth, that he went to the cross and died upon the cross for our sins, that we all are sinners, that we all come short of the glory of God. We all have been led astray like sheep, that we all have sinned against God Almighty himself. We know we might have did the act to one another that we supposed to make amends to, but we have sinned against God Almighty himself. And with that sinning, that there came a penalty, and that penalty was death and death means separation from God death means separation for eternity as we were supposed to be cast into hell for the sins that we have committed against God Almighty himself but he sent a gift a precious gift then 
his only begotten son in the name of Christ Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he went to the cross. He paid the punishment for you and I and he is the way the truth and the light and if we believe in him and believe that on the third day he rose again because if he didn't rise our serving would be in vain that he is the first of the resurrection. In other words, he is the first one that ever rose that's still living today. That he is right now sitting on the right hand of the Father, making prayers for you and I, and waiting for his triumphant return where he's going to gather up his church without spot or blemish. In other words, he is waiting on you and I. And he is waiting to come and gather you and I. All we have to do is take it by faith and turn from our ways and turn toward the ways of Jesus Christ. And if we can do this and confess it with our mouth, in other words, cry out in prayer, Lord, I am a sinner and I need you as my Savior. I believe that you are the living Christ. I believe that you are God Almighty, all by yourself. And Lord, I'm crying out to you to save my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. And as we do that, we get us a Bible. And listen, start reading and studying that Bible. If you don't have one, go to the nearest resale shop and ask them for one. Go to the nearest church and knock on the door and ask them for a Bible. And when you get that Bible, read it and study it and find you a sin-hating Bible-preaching church and begin to make your public confession of your salvation by way of baptism and begin to walk with God. Begin to hold on and keep the faith of Christ Jesus that he is who he say he is and he is my truth. He is my way. And he is my light. Hold on to that as you go through your journey. And at the end of that journey, you're going to hear those immortal words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. All right. We're so grateful that you all are here. we thankful for you all. And remember, we want you to share, share, share the videos. Listen, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe at the ARK, A-R-K, of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you will see our symbol right here. Our symbol says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And we want you to hold on and go through there and just look at the videos let us know which ones you like which ones you don't like give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down listen let us know which ones you want us to bring back spiritual exercise mental and physical workout uh, our covenant seekers detective game if there's a teaching that you want us to teach on uh, we have many different series there we even have our Sunday morning worship there we closing out on the series 9 entitled you help me you help me part 2 you help me part 3 is there you help me part 4 is there you help me part 5 is there part 6 and part 7 is there we doing part 8 this this Sunday at 11 o'clock and at 12.30 on YouTube. Come on and be with us as we walk through the life of Joseph. And we receiving precious nuggets and seeing godly principles lived out in one's life. Our baseline scripture is Genesis chapter 50 verse number 20. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. All right, we're so grateful. Listen, we have a whole lot of people for prayer, and we don't want to miss anybody, so we praying for everybody. We have some special prayers out right now of some people in different situations. We have prayers out for Virginia Gentry. We have prayers out for our neighbors. They just had their child was born, and it was a preemie, so we praying for them, and we're praying for Brother Cliff. 
cliff right now. So, and then we're praying for Nakia and we're praying for my wife right now. We got special prayers out for Zachariah and Carrington and Deborah. We got special prayers out for you all in your situation and circumstances as we praying for Israel and we praying for Afghanistan and we praying for all those that's in war-torn areas, all those that's in disastrous situation, as we praying for our government, as we praying for all those with medical needs, those that's in hospitals, nursing homes, residential care, independent living, those that's on the bed of affliction at their homes. We praying for Mr. Timms and their family as they going through a transition stage as one is in hospice care. And we going to continue to pray for you all and your situations and circumstances as we pray for all those in living statuses and things, those that's in missions and shelters and things like like that. We're praying for all of that. And let us have a word of prayer right now. Father God, we come before you, Lord. And we come before you, Lord, because we know that you are able, Lord. We come before you, Lord, because you know every situation, every circumstance. You know every cell and every molecule. You know every destiny. You know every understanding, Lord. Father God, you are wisdom, Lord, and you are our peace, our comfort, Lord, as we continue to pray for Brother Ray, as you comfort him and massage his heart, Lord, and we continue to pray for all those that's crying out for comfort and peace right now, Lord. Lord, we're praying that they be endowed with your joy and your happiness, Lord. As we continue to pray, Father God, we asking that you intervene in every situation and circumstance. Lord, that your resurrection power be there, Lord. That your peace be there, Lord. That, Lord, that your glory be in every situation as you are magnified in the situation. As the body of Christ is edified. And, Lord, as the kingdom of God is multiplied. Lord, we praying in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, we're so thankful for you all. And as we always say, Jesus loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye now.